Hi everyone in Holland. Uh, my name is Norman Bodek and I want to thank you for inviting me to speak to you at your conference and I hope you're all having a great learning experience. And I just want to spend a little bit of time with you sharing about my experiences with Dr. Shingo, Mr. Ono, and Mr. Harada, three really great men from Japan that I've had the privilege of knowing. I want to go back with you to uh, 1981. At that time, I owned a company called Productivity, Productivity Press. And um, I was in Japan on my second study mission. And I had about 12 people with me, including Jack Warren. Jack then was the vice president of a company called Omark Industries, eventually became president of the company. And as we traveled the first week, Jack kept, kept saying over and over again, Norman, I just don't understand what the Japanese are doing. My company seems to be better in everything. This embarrassed me a little bit until we came to the second day of the second week. And we visited a company, Nippon Denso. This was um, one, of, one of Toyota's top suppliers. And they were making starter motors. We went into the plant, and for the first time, we saw a very quick changeover. They had a daisy wheel which had these uh, dies on it, and it took them only seconds to make a changeover. That completely amazed uh, Jack Warren. Then they started to show us how Just In Time worked within their factory. In fact, how Kanban was working. There was no cards in this particular factory. They just used little color disc. And if it was blue, they made items for blue. If it was green, they made items for green. Then the plant manager, Mr. Ota, took us into the meeting room and started to talk to us about uh, mixed modeling, giving us a lecture. And my guide turned to me and she said, Norman, we have to catch a, a train to Tokyo. And Mr. Ota said, no, nope, you can't go until you understand exactly what mixed modeling is all about. And he continued his lecture. At the end of the lecture, finally, he gave me a sheet of paper. On the sheet of paper, it said, the study of the Toyota production system from an engineering viewpoint, Shigeo Shingo. I had no idea what the paper meant, but on the bottom of the paper, it said Japan Management Association. So when I got to Tokyo, I called Japan Management Association, and I asked them what this was all about. And they said this was a new book in English by Shigeo Shingo. We call it now the Green Book. It's still a great book for you to go back and read. Well, I asked the group, how many of you want to read the book? Only Jack Warren said yes, <laughs> which was interesting. It's only $21. I ordered two, and I read it on the airplane coming back from uh, Japan, and Jack read it on the airplane. And we both did the exact same thing. I ordered 500 copies to sell to my newsletter subscribers, and Jack Warren bought 500 copies to give to every manager, every engineer, with the instructions, please read it in small groups, and then see what you could apply here at Omark. And they did. Just the simple act of reading a book, and this book can be very powerful if you do it this way. They read the book in chapters and asked each other the question, how could we apply it here in Omark? Within one year, Omark became the best just-in-time company in America, if not the West. At the end of that year, Omark eliminated 90% of their inventory. They had nine plants. They closed two of them because they had too much extra space. I sold the newsletter. I sold the book to my newsletter subscribers and quickly sold 35,000 copies. It was amazing. I went to Japan subsequently and I met Dr. Shingo and I walked over to him and I introduced myself as Norman Bodek. And Dr. Shingo looked up at me and he said, then he looked down. No recognition. Like all, you know, all, all Englishmen look the same. Then he popped his head up and he said, ah, Bodek's son. He remembered because I ordered so many thousands of books from him. And then I invited him to come to America. 
And he was in a wheelchair at the time. He says, how can I go to the American? I'm in a wheelchair. And I said, don't worry, you're going to get well and you'll come. And he did. For the next 10 years, he came at least twice a year to America. And I would take him to many different places. I took him to Drexler Industry once. This was a, a very interesting event. And while we were there, we all went over to a punch press machine. And the machine was, um, one worker was picking up a piece of metal from the side, picking it up on the table, pushing it into the punch press, putting his hands back and press the two buttons. The press would come down and form the metal. Then the worker would go inside and reach in and pull out the formed metal and put it over to the other side. And Dr. Singel said to the group of engineers around us, he said, what's the value adding ratio? I want you to write this down. What is the value adding ratio? And one engineer said, well, it's 100%. It's working all the time. Another engineer said, no, only 75%. Another engineer said 50%, and Shingo laughed, and he said, only 15% is when the blade is hitting the metal. That's value adding. Everything else is waste. Now, here's the key moment, the key learning moment for me, is Shingo said, what can you do to improve the value-adding ratio? That's the power. Instead of telling them what to do, he asked them, what can you do to improve the ratio? One engineer immediately said, you know, I can get a leveling device that'll automatically keep the metal at the height of the desk. Just like you see in dishes in a in a in a in a restaurant sometimes. Then another engineer said, I could put a spring inside inside the bed of the press so when the when the when the press goes up, the spring would automatically eject the metal and the the worker would just pick it up and put it down. Both saving just a few seconds. But that's the idea of just in time is just to save a few seconds. The power was just asking the question of engineers, how can you improve the value-adding ratio? Well, a few minutes later, we walk over to another press, and Shingo wants to teach him how to make a quick die chain. And he says, how long is it taking you to change this machine? And they said, it's taking us two hours to do it. And Shingo said, I'm going to teach you some things now, and then I want you to demonstrate how long it's going to take. And he started to teach them certain fundamental things. And then at the end of about 30 minutes, he said to them, I want you to make this change over in less than 10 minutes. Now people laughed. In fact, one engineer laughed at me and he said, never. We're, it's taking two hours here. And Shingo said, look, how long is it going to take you to do what I've asked you to do? And they said about two hours. And Shingo said, okay. I got something else to do. I'll come back two hours later to see it, and you'll demonstrate it. He comes back two hours later, and um, he watches the changeover, and he always had a stopwatch with him, always a stopwatch. And he calculated and, and timed the operation. At the end of the demonstration, it only took them 12 minutes, from two hours to 12 minutes after 30 minutes of instruction. Them. The engineer who said it couldn't be done was shell-shocked. Um, Shingo laughed again with a scorn on his face because, hey, fellas, I told you to do it in less than 10 minutes. And then he laughed. It was amazing traveling with Dr. Shingo. Um, one of the happiest days being with him is when we went to Utah State and they gave him an honorary doctorate degree. He was so proud. I don't know what it was, but he was missing something in his education, something he felt, you know, <laughs> that he didn't have in his life that was accomplished by getting an honorary doctorate degree. And he gave a, an amazing talk. And a few months later, and unfortunately, he died. And when he died, his wife put his body in state, and she wrapped around his cap and gown from his graduation at Utah State. And at the same time, we started the Shingo Prize in America. I like that idea because Japan used the Deming Prize to spearhead improvement in Japan. I thought America needed some kind of prize like that. 
when Singer would talk, most of the time when he came to America, he'd run a lecture, and he would talk about pokeyoke. Pokeyoke. I don't know, in the West, we still understand the power of pokeyoke, which is to never allow a defect to be made. Never. And if you go to some Japanese plants, you, they will state they never let a defect leave the plant. And you'll see thousands of these very little inexpensive sensors to detect any kind of variation. The other thing Shingo used to teach, of course, I mentioned, was quick dye change. And he'd give a lecture on how to change dye change quickly. Because, you know, in the original story, Ono goes over to Shingo, and he says, Shingo, I need your help. I want to get the dye changes down on this press from four hours to two hours. And Shingo said, just okay. Amazing. Just okay. And he sat and he watched. A couple of days later, Ono comes by and he says, no, you know, two hours is no good. I want you to do it in less than 10 minutes. That's where it came from. And Shingo said, okay. And he watched. He just watched the dye changes. He watched and took notes. And just by watching, he was able to figure out how to reduce virtually every single die change at Toyota is now at less than 10 minutes, if not one touch. I was in General Motors, and General Motors had a 40-hour changeover. I pretty much saw the same changeover at Toyota done in seven minutes. 